We're going through um, the book of, uh, we're going through the, the, the giants of faith. And not really giants of faith, because I was telling Mike, by the end of this series, uh, in Hebrews 11, you, you, you need to find a place for you there. Because the book is still open for everyone, okay? It's not just the people who had gone and the faith and everything. No, there's Enoch who's one verse, and this one has one verse. Some of them have two verses. But you need to find your space in Hebrews 11, because the book is still open for all of us. Giants of faith, whether we've done mighty things or small things. All it needs is faith. Praise the Lord. And so we're going to read through Hebrews 11. Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 22. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place uh, that he was to receive an inheritance. And, and no, it starts by saying by obedience. Faith and obedience goes hand in hand. Yeah. And then what does it say again? Um, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in a land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs uh, with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that had a foundation whose designer and builder was God. I probably underlined that. He was looking for a city that the designer and the builder was God. And that was by faith. And by faith, Sarah receives herself um, by, by, by faith. Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past age. She considered him faith, faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him, as good as dead, were born descendants as many as stars of heaven and as many as innumerable gains of the sand of the sea. This all died in faith, not having received things promised from, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiled on earth. For people, speak, uh, for, for people who speak thus make it clear they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they will have an opportunity to return. But it is that they desire a better country, that is heavenly one. Let's underline that. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, and our God for us also this morning here. For he is prepared for us a city. By faith, when Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac. And who had to receive the promise was intact. He was in act of offering up his only son. Of him, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead. From which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessing on Jacob and Esau. And by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of his sons of Joseph, blessed one of his sons of Joseph, bowing in worship overhead of his staff. And I'll just leave 22 says, By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made, made mention of Exodus of the Israelites, and gave a direction concerning his bonds. Right. So I'm just going to go back. Quickly, we know the story of, uh, of Abraham. Uh, he's called by God, and Joshua says he was probably worshiping idols and all of that. Had no clue who God is, but God calls him. In Genesis, he said, come with me. He follows God, not knowing where he's going. Just obedience. He takes his wife, Sarah. He takes his father, Terah. He takes his brother, Naha, And he takes Lot. And they journey. Not knowing where they go, they just travel. And along the way, some things are happening which are not really great for Isaac. Because God says, I'll be with you. But then, when God says, I'll be with you, there's some stuff which are happening in, in Abraham's life. Probably, he will have questioned, what did I sign myself to? Abraham, Abraham's father dies. His brother Naha dies. He doesn't have children. He's 75. Things are not good. Things are, are not getting better. And we see not only that, does his father die, he's childless, there was a quarrel between his servants. Lord and his servants, they quarrel. So Abraham is facing, is fa is facing a chaos here. He's in storm. He's left alone. He's left, he, he's left the idols he was worshiping that he knew better than that. 
He's been told by God he doesn't know. Come with me. But there's one thing that Abram does that is so important. Obedient. And that's what I say. Obedient goes hand in hand with faith. There's a writer who says, we serve a God. I don't know if you can put that, Caleb. We serve a God who tells us to get out, but won't tell you where you are getting into. If you're waiting on clarity from God, clarity comes with journey. It is easier to direct a moving car than one that is standing still. Abraham had to know who God was through the journey. Abraham wouldn't know who God was if he was called and just sat there and was like, wait, I'm just going to relax here. He had to make that obedience and sacrifice. And he doesn't just live alone. He lives with his family. Uh, uh, Sarah, who is, who is barren, 75 of age. And the Bible says there was a famine in the land. His father dies. Brother dies. Charles, there's a quarrel in the family. It seems like a modern, modern society now. Well, like God is telling us to do something. But economy is thrashed. You've been praying for something to happen. Nothing is happening. But you're still holding to God's promise. And we see a lot of time when God is speaking to Abraham, Abraham reminds God, how am I going to be a father of a nation? I have no child. Abraham is concerned about his legacy. And he's like, I have no child. Will you just please bless the servant that I'm living with that he can be my heir? But God says, no, 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 no. You will have a child, and his name will be Isaac. It's God we serve. If you're serving God, you will only find clarity, the purpose he calls you, when you take a step of faith and start moving to that direction. Abraham had to learn that. And in, in, in Genesis 15, I'm going quick, God tells Abraham one thing. But in Genesis 15, after, after, after this thing, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abraham, for I am your shield and I am your very great reward. That's enough. Abraham is concerned about the famine, what is happening around, everything is going uh, south. He doesn't have a child. But God reminds him, I am your reward. You are very reward. When we live as Christian, number one, we need to understand, as long as God is our reward, that's enough. If God is our reward, that's all we need. And Abraham has to understand that. God tells, I am your very reward, and I will be your shield. There is famine, there is quarrel, there is fight, but you need to know that I will be your shield, and I will be your reward. So fear not, Abraham. So we leave the air for Abraham, and then we move quickly to Isaac. Isaac is going through the same pattern. So Isaac moved away from there and then came to the valley of Gerah where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in, in time of his father Abraham, which the Philistine had stopped up after Abraham died. And he gave them the same names his father had given them. So Isaac's servant dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerah quarreled with those of Isaac and said, The water is ours. So he named the well Isaac. Because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well. But they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. And he moved on from there. And he dug another well. And no one quarreled over it. He named it Rehoboth. Say, now the Lord has given us a room. And we will flourish. Keep going. And from there he went up to Beersheba. That the night the Lord appeared to him. And he said, I am the God of your father Abram. Do not be afraid. That's another word there. Do not be afraid. And again, Isaac is going through the same Christ. The Bible says from 26, there was a famine previous to another famine. And Isaac decides to move from that land. So he goes to another land. And while he was in that land, he's not famous in that land. The Bible says he started digging wells. Because we understand he's living in, a, in, a, in an environment where water is very important. Water is life. And so what he does, he digs the borehole, he finds water, 
as soon as he finds it, the Bible says the Philistines came and say, no, you have to move away from here because this was our, 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 our well. And the Bible says he moved to another one. He dug it. They filled with rocks. So he's moving from one to another, to another, to another. Every time he digs a well, they come and they tell him, you need to move away. Every time he digs a well, he finds water. Then to tell him, you need to move away. And Isaac keeps moving and moving and moving. And he feels sometimes us in our faith. You know, you trust God in this, and as soon as you feel like this is the time, you just feel there's another mile to go on, and then you say, like, okay, if I just settle on this one, it will happen. This is the job I'm looking for, and you apply. And as soon as you're just settling on that job, you realize this is not the right. Things are not working. There's famine and all that. And then the Lord has to remind Isaac, I am the God of your father, Abraham. When God says that he's a God who kept, uh, who kept his covenant, with Abraham, and he's the God who will keep the same covenant with Isaac. The Bible says in Timothy, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. His word was faithful to Abraham, that I will be your God, and I will bless your descendants. And he has to tell Isaac, do not be afraid. And though we're looking to Isaac, few words that the Lord speaks to him, he says, fear not, I am with you, and I will bless you. It's faith. It's moving in. It's moving when some things are tough. When you're digging the wells and they're filling with the rocks, you're still holding to the Lord. When things are not working, the economy is bad. It's still holding to the Lord and not giving in because he who called you is faithful to his word. And that's what matters a lot. Before our faith, God had to be faithful to Abraham. And he's reminding Isaac, I will be faithful to you. I will be faithful to you in famine. I will be faithful to you when you dig the wells and you still can't even benefit from that water. I will be faithful for you. What you need to know is, I am your reward. It's good when we know God is our reward. Because neither sickness, no disease, no economy, no whatever is happening around us can really, really separate us from the love of Christ. Because that's what matters. Moving very quickly, we move to Jacob. I don't know why you gave me more, cha more chapters to do with faith, Mike, but I'll try and cover that up. So we, look, we move to Jacob. Jacob is going through the same crisis as well. The Bible says... Isaac loved Jacob because Jacob will, uh, loved Esau because Esau used to bring him a wild meat. And then the Bible says uh, Rebekah loved Jacob. He was a quiet guy, but he was a schemer and a liar. Family issues start there already. Father loving one and mother loving one. So Jacob is growing up with left, probably low self-esteem because of who his father perceives him. He can't do better than his brother. But what happens, we know how the story goes. He lies to his father and he, he, snacks, he, he, he steals his brother's blessings. And now he's on the run. Things are not good with him. He's a schemer. He's a liar. And he's also lied to by his uncle Laban. And now he's also on the run. Genesis 32 verse 9. The Bible says... After this, he rest, after he had all been in this journey running back and forth, he's scared to meet his brother Esau because of what he did. You know, after Jacob wrestled with God, he changed his name. It's like you're not going to be a schemer anymore. You're not the same person that people looked up to you like the, the past person. Because the old has gone, the new has come. You are now Israel. Because your name is not Jacob anymore. And the Bible says Jacob started walking with the Lord. But there's some stuff in his life that still is pu pushing him back. He knows he's wronged his brother. He met the Lord and he sorted that out. But in Genesis 32 verse 9, the Bible says, when he realized he was going to meet his brother Esau, the past started haunting. The past started slowing him down. Our past can start slowing our journey of faith. That's not what God wants us this morning to think about. Probably some of us are here this morning. And your walk with the Lord is good. And then sometimes you feel of your past. You come with excitement of worshiping the Lord. 
and then you remember what you did in the past. And you can't even stand before the Lord anymore. You remember how your life is. And then you're just like, I don't know how my journey of faith with the Lord is. The Bible says, I, Jacob slowed down because he remembered what he had done to his brother. The past can slow our work of faith down. I remember this. When I was a little boy, I was cheeky. And, and sometimes I will st step on the grass or do something bad. And, and I remember my grandma, every evening she would come home and me and my cousin would be running towards her just from the gate. We run. We're so excited to see her. And uh, during the day, I would have been a bit naughty. And as soon as I was really fast, still probably fast than anyone, most of you in this church. <laughs> and I saw my grandma. I would be running to meet her with joy. And as soon as I start running very fast, I can hear my cousin shouting, we're going to tell grandma, you broke the pot. <laughs> and soon I slowed down. <laughs> then I started, it, that morale of running fast just slowed me down. And sometimes I would stop. Because I didn't know what my grandma would say. It's the past. It's the past. We expect so much from the Lord. We come with excitement like, I'm going to meet the Lord. I'm going to walk this faith. I trust the Lord that he said his word is yes and amen. And then we remember our past. Or the enemy puts things which we've done in the past. Or what is happening with our economy. Or with our past. And then you slow down. Our past can slow our faith journey down. And he used to do that to me. The fear. The fear of tomorrow. The fear of tomorrow and what we did in the past slows us down. Today, just run. It doesn't matter what you've done. We serve a God who says, I am your reward. He knows your life well than anyone else. Just lift those hands if you're worshiping. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. Just say, it is me and the Lord. And I know he has forgiven me and I'm running these race of faith. Glory to him. Amen. Amen. The Jacob has to fight with some things in the past. But it's still mentioned in the book. That he was one of the heroes of faith. So it's not what we did in the past. It's how we woke up. How we picked ourselves. And say, I'm not going to let the past slow me down. And he ran that. So that's just an overview of those three guys. And now we get back to Hebrews 11. Where we're reading today. I put a few points here. Just to remind ourselves. And as I said in the beginning. By the end of this series you probably find a place to put your name in that chapter. doesn't matter what you do. It's your bidding and how you walk with God that matters. The obedience is the most important we can ever do. Even if it means just taking few baby steps. Abraham wasn't perfect in his journey, but he relied on God fully. We see Isaac going through some tough time, but God says, do not be afraid for I am with you. As long as you are on the move, the Lord will be with you. And then we see Jacob going through the same, same, same hurdle. Tough life, family life, and the, the, the societies around him. But God still says, I will be your God. So don't get comfortable. Look forward towards the city. That's what the Bible says, and that's what we're going to look today in Hebrews 11, that God had made for them a city that they were looking forward to. Most of them, the Bible says, they did not see that city, or to be precise, all of them, they did not see the city. But they were looking for the city that the founder was God himself. And I always have to remind myself that this world is not our home. The cities and the things we look around, they're temporarily here, but we're looking forward for the city that the founder is God himself. So we should not be getting comfortable with our life just around here and making our empire, but we should have a mentality with a vision that there's a city that the Lord himself has built, and we are living our life towards that city by faith. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, it says, Therefore, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which clings so close and let us run 
with endurance the race that is set before us. So everything that we know, every sin, everything that we know will slow us down. This kind of race or this faith, this faith race, everything we, we lay it down. Because chapter 2 says, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. It's not our faith, just our faith. The Bible says Jesus is the founder and the perfecter of our faith. So you don't have to have a perfect faith and walk towards it. You just need to allow Jesus to walk towards your faith. Because the Bible says he's the perfecter of our faith. And with our journey, with whatever is happening around, just allow Christ to perfect your faith. Just obey and just move. It doesn't matter how many steps, just small steps, whatever you're doing in your, in your prayer life, in your reading his scripture, in your fellowship, small steps, knowing Christ is the founder and the perfecter of our faith. And it says clearly, setting our eyes on him. Is that that thing means when there's that encouragement when we set our eyes on Christ? Now, whatever is happening around doesn't matter much. Setting our eyes on Him. And Abraham had to live that kind of lifestyle. He knew he was called by God, he knew who had called him. He knew God was, God had told him to move. And even things were not working well around him. He knew God would bring it to a perfection. And there's just more to that. Abraham and Jacob and the rest were looking for a city that the founder was God himself. And by faith, they knew the city was coming. We are here by faith because we know the city is coming. Number two, get rid of all that wears you down. Get rid of all that wears down. And I've said about that, the sin, the fear, the fear of yesterday, the fear of today, the fear of tomorrow, the guilt of our past. Get rid of everything that will slow you down, just like Jacob. And I'll finish in verse 6, verse Timothy. He says, he who started a good work in you is faithful to accomplish it. He who started a good work in you is faithful to bring it even to conclusion. It's not our work. It's Christ who started a good work in us. It's Christ who started the journey of faith in us. Looking up to him, the perfecter and founder of our faith, he's faithful to bring it to completion. He's faithful to walk through with us through hard time because he will bring it to completion. Because he's the one who started a good job in our life. Look up to him. Trust him. Trust him with your life. We looked at Abel and all and Enoch and all this. What requires was just simple, simple obedience. Abel was giving and Enoch was trusting God. What God has called you to do this morning? What kind of faith and journey are you walking with God this morning? Are you trusting God for a for job? Are you trusting God for a certain career and students who are here passing exam and all that? What is it you're trusting God to do in your life? And what is it when you look at it? What you see is fear. What you see is fear and famine or whatever you do. It's not just going anywhere. Isaac was there. Every time he dug the well, he thought it's done. And then he had to move again. And he kept moving and moving and moving. Just trusting God. Simple strips of trusting God, even in the hardest times. <laughs>